They are a species that survived the Ice Age. They've developed remarkable survival skills in all sorts of environments. Will the intervention of humans bring about their salvation or destruction? Stay tuned for High Altitude Butterflies. In the west of the Yunnan Guizhou Plateau, the air pressure is low, with an oxygen-deprived average altitude of over 2,000 meters. That said, every summer the air is filled with these dancing fairies. They are known as the plateau butterflies. There are over 17,000 kinds of butterflies in the world. Butterflies living on the plateau are rare. They are survivors of the Ice Age. Having adapted to the plateau environment after eons of evolution and natural selection. They can exist as high as the snow line. They are one of the few insect species able to survive at the highest altitudes on the planet. Now, they're on the endangered species list. Over the past century, the world has been warming at an unusual rate, with the national average temperature increasing by six degrees, triggering multiple chain reactions. On Earth, a species will disappear every hour, threatening another 10 to 30 species. Two professors from Qinghai Normal University School of Biogeography, Ding Wei and Liu Zihua, have been studying plateau butterflies for 10 years, mostly in the Qinghai and Yunnan regions. They have also built a butterfly laboratory in Yunnan, marking the living altitudes of each one beside each specimen. In recent years, a type of migrating butterfly has attracted their attention. There is scant information known about it. Its migratory habits have drawn the attention of scientists. It's the African monarch. This is the This is This is the Three thousand five hundred years ago, the African monarch appeared on the walls of the pharaoh's tombs, becoming the earliest butterfly artistically depicted by humans. The African monarch is beautifully colored with black and white spots set in the wings and bodies. Their beautiful appearance and magical life cycle are captivating to both laymen and scientists alike. Jade Dragon Snow Mountain, at an altitude of nearly 6,000 meters, is located at the juncture of two plateaus. Vertically, from the bottom of the mountain upwards, the landscape changes rapidly from a subtropical zone to an area of permafrost. A 
A wide range of plants make the butterfly species rich and colorful here. Geographic isolation formed by alpine valleys provides conditions for many rare butterflies to thrive here. Jade Dragon Snow Mountain summer has finally arrived. Summer here lasts less than three months, so creatures hurry to make good use of this time to grow and proliferate. Ding Wei and Liu Zihua will capture African monarchs and label them to track their survival rates in a few days before the mountain enters winter. They came to the mountain two months earlier than usual. In the recent three years, the climate has been chaotic, making life for the African monarch difficult. Will the habits of the African monarch change because of it? This problem worries the two scientists. 九八年以后，呃，我的观察呢，运动雪山上面的积雪呢是有所减少。那么呢，表明它的那个气候还是有一些变化的。那么呢，尽管这究竟是在哪个海拔带，现在也无法确定。嗯，它的需要去找。The adult African monarch's lifespan is only 15 days, so it must complete mating and breeding during this period. Ganhaiza area is a rare forest zone on the mountain. The African monarch likes this place for mating. Female African monarchs have never been enchanted with the surroundings as they're too busy trying to get on with the second half of their short existence. They must find partners to complete mating in the next five days. The male is also looking for a mate. It hugs the female butterfly tightly and flies to the treetops with her. Mating can last for several hours. The male butterfly will have completed the greatest achievement in its lifetime, impregnating the female with his semen. Summer on the plateau is fleeting. Almost all of the African monarchs finish mating at the same time. After this, the male awaits his death. The dead male butterflies mean that the female ones have already begun to enter the gestation phase, meaning a third of the female's life is over. 
there are still 10 days before the African monarch finish their life cycle. So Deng Wei and Liu Zihua have to find them before that. After locating their nursery sites, the African monarch's life can finally be studied in detail. Ding Wei and Liu Zihua must rush to where there are no tall trees to block out the sunlight, but with enough lush bushes to provide the perfect nursery for the African monarch. Jade Snow Dragon Mountain is filled with thick foliage. The African monarch larvae are partial to these leaves, but their vision is extremely poor, so they can only rely on their sense of smell to identify the location of the plant. Landing on the leaves of a plant, an African monarch can judge whether they are good for laying their eggs. In order to avoid the larvae fighting for adequate food, the female will only lay half her eggs here. The female African monarch finally lays her first egg. There's still a week left before the babies hatch. The female is exhausted, but has to speed up laying all the eggs in the last seven days of her life. Ah, 完了后呢,立起来意思,你别来惹我,紧接着了。The <笑> Indian Fratellary is an admirer of the African monarch. Imitating their appearance, the African monarch has wonderful ways of camouflaging itself on the plateau. African monarchs are toxic, and the bright colors warn predators to this fact. Not all of the animals understand this. Bullfrogs find out very soon that African monarchs aren't very tasty and will pass on them the next time. African monarchs fly slowly in a straight line, which leaves enough time for predators to identify them and leave them alone. Jin 很 African monarch needs to lay 400 eggs to ensure the continuation of the family. It cannot pause for a moment, as its next spawning place is over 30 kilometers from here. 
Even if the whole journey is downwind, it will still take two days to reach it. The exhausted butterflies can fly neither as high nor as fast, which exposes them to new dangers. A spider pounces, the African monarch is caught in its web. The spiders have immunity to the toxins of the African monarch. Fortunately, it laid a batch of eggs five days ago in a valley some 20 kilometers away. In a week, African monarchs will emerge from their eggs, and in two weeks, their weight will increase 3,000 times. The African monarch larvae have no competitors for food, as other insects cannot digest the food they like to eat. If they accidentally break the main vein of the leaf, the sticky colloidal plant secretion will eventually block their mouths, starving them to death. The African monarch larvae wanders everywhere. It needs to find a place with plenty of sunshine to form its pupa. It chooses a section of leaf, secretes a silk base, and waits. It still looks like a larvae from its appearance, but in fact, everything is changing. In the glassy cocoon, it experiences a second magical transformation. A long drought is broken by a heavy rain, which nourishes the plants. For the African monarch, it's a disaster. Their pupae need a warm and dry environment to grow. The rain makes it humid and cool. Ding Wei and Liu Zihua have been waiting a month, but the rains have disrupted the whole plan. Their biggest concern is that the pupae might die in the cold. In August, the temperature on the mountain is still unseasonably cool. But the young do not give up. Braving the icy wind, they're waiting for sunshine. Some become specimens hanging there forever. Yet some are luckier to receive sun from the gaps between the leaves, helping complete the second transformation of their lives. More than a week later, these pupae turn from green to white to yellow and then finally brown. This is a sign that an African monarch is about to emerge into a butterfly. They're sensitive to sunlight. Only when it is sunny will they slip their casing.
This African monarch spends over 10 minutes struggling. Before taking off, it circulates its bodily fluids in its wrinkled wings. And after basking in the sun for more than two hours, the wings become stiffened. African monarchs are afraid to miss every opportunity to supplement their energy. So over the next several days, they will leave the plateau for the warm south. Every time they migrate south, they will pass by the source of the Whitewater River. They stop for a rest, using their tentacles to dip in the water, enjoying a final gift from the plateau. Dingwei and Liu Zihua's tracking of African monarchs has reached the final stage. They need to determine whether the living habits of this batch of African monarch have changed from previous generations. They are rushing to where the African monarch stop for a drink of water. Hotel的吃根上做的,是吧? 完了后呢，我就能估算整个种群的密度到底有多大，这个地区种群到底有多大，这叫标志重合。Winter on the mountain is late by a full month, and so is the migration of the African monarch. After the changing climate has disrupted the biological clock of the African monarch, they still remember the first stop on their journey. Then they will fly south to find a place with abundant sunshine and food to continue their lives. Ding Wei and Liu Zihui continue tracking the African monarch according to their migration route. Next summer, the mountain will usher in a new group of African monarchs. It's the most cold resistant of the whole butterfly family. Human beings have tried artificial breeding to save the species, but can they succeed? Join us again for part two of High Altitude Butterflies.